Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are going to talk about my experience with gastric sleeve surgery. I'm not too sure where I'm going to start, uh, but yeah, let's just get right into the video. Also, if you guys are not already, please don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on post notifications. That way you guys get notified every time I post. Let's just get right into it. <laughs> sure where I want to start this video off um, so I'm just gonna start from the beginning so I had gastric sleeve surgery on October 11th um, so that's why I've MIA for almost two months basically and I wasn't sure if I was gonna make a video about it but I figured why not share my experience for other people as well um, I think I'm also gonna be kind of doing monthly updates as well I'm not gonna go into every single detail in this video I'm, I think I'm gonna make multiple videos so that it's a little bit easier and kind of separated um, so I'm just gonna start from the get-go so I am almost at my two months post-op it's been a hard struggle for sure um, <clears throat> so if you don't know what gastric sleeve surgery is it is a surgery that reduces your stomach like 75 or 80 percent I think I'm pretty sure it's 80 85 percent they remove um, that much of your stomach so your stomach is extremely smaller and you get fuller faster there is also different types of surgeries as well there's gastric bypass um, the surgeon who did mine only does gastric sleeve and gastric bypass I'm not gonna go into de details about gastric bypass if you do have questions leave them down below and I can answer them for you but I'm only going to stay on topic of the gastric sleeve I'm not really sure where I, where I should start. I guess I'll start um, the process before. Um, so you can't just go to your doctor and say, hey, I want to get the gastric sleeve and get it done next week. That's not how it works. It's a really long process. So I had to, uh, first I had to do a consult with the surgeon that um, I found. And um, then they go over if you qualify for it. And then there's also a long process. So I had to see a nutritionist once a month for six months. I had to see a psychologist um, once. They just want to make sure that you are kind of mentally prepared. That this is an extreme lifestyle change. I had to have an endoscopy, which they took a biopsy of my stomach to make sure everything is okay down there. I also had to see a lung doctor. Um, they want to make sure that your lungs are strong and prepared for surgery. So basically the reason that you have to see the nutritionist once a month for six months is that they want to see that you are able to kind of do this lifestyle change on your own even without the surgery. Not that it's going to be easy, it's definitely going to be hard because after the surgery it is easier to pick up on the new lifestyle change. But they want to see that you are able to do it prior to the surgery as well and you're not gaining any type of weight because if you do, they will cancel the surgery. Um... But yeah, I don't think I'm going to go into too many details for the process to actually get the surgery. I think I just want to share my experience on the surgery and then maybe I'll make a separate video on all the steps before surgery if you guys are interested. So um, yeah, I had to do all those steps and then I got approved for surgery and I had surgery on October 11th. Um, so let's go into that. Um, it was very scary. I was so nervous. I've never had any surgery done before. Um, I only had that endoscopy. That was the first time I've ever been put out, but it's definitely not the same type of um, going under, obviously. That is just like a quick anesthesia, and this is like general anesthesia. And um, yeah, so I was really nervous. Um, I was excited too because this is something I wanted for a really long time. And I felt like when I first uh, had the consult with the surgeon and that I had to do all these steps, I kind of felt like a little discouraged. I felt like, wow, it's really never going to happen because you have to see the nutritionist once a month. And if you miss it, you have to start all over again and you have to go through all these steps. You had to get a biopsy of your stomach. It was just, it's, it's honestly a lot of things you have to do before surgery. And at, when I first had found out I had to do all this, I was... Like I said, I was really discouraged and I was really nervous and I was really anxious. 
but honestly after the fact I'm really glad that I had to go through all the steps because I feel like I know basically every single thing about this surgery and all the steps that you need to take before and after that's really what they want you um, to go through they want you to learn about what's going to happen after surgery before surgery they want you to be extremely prepared and informed that uh, this isn't a quick fix this isn't something that you can just okay I'm gonna do it and you know it'll be over it is an extreme lifestyle change and I can't stress that enough it really is so all those bad habits that you probably had before um, all of that's going to stop like drastically it's going to stop so um we'll talk about day of surgery and also I was making quick videos on my phone throughout the process throughout the day how I was feeling so I think I'm gonna actually put all those videos together and kind of post them up to let you guys know how I was in that specific moment because me sitting here explaining yeah you know I was in pain blah 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 um you'll see the video of me actually talking in that moment and you guys can kind of tell for yourself how I actually really felt um but yeah so so the day before surgery you can't eat or drink anything after 12 o'clock and then the 8 o'clock night before I had to drink a whole bottle of orange Gatorade um within like 15 minutes and then the the next morning three hours before the surgery I had to drink another whole bottle of orange Gatorade as well because they want to make sure that you stay hydrated because after the surgery you cannot eat or drink anything all day not that you'll feel hungry anyways you, you don't at least my experience I did not um, but they want to make sure you stay hydrated and all that good stuff so then I went to the hospital I was waiting um, they did all the tests I had to put on like this huge bodysuit that was just like very trapped a lot of heat so then they started bringing me to the operating room I was so nervous um I mean I really can't explain you know you, everyone's different in that moment I was very nervous I was very scared and uh yeah so I was in there they put me to sleep I wake up in recovery and the first thing I said to the nurse that was right there when I was waking up it was like I feel like I just did a thousand sit-ups and she just started laughing so it was pretty sore when I first woke up it felt sore it really didn't feel too bad in that moment when I first woke up um, it wasn't really bad in that moment I just felt very sore felt like I did a lot of sit-ups it just felt very 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 sore but it wasn't like unbearable in that moment. So I must have dozed back off. My family came in to see me. I was talking to them. Then they bring me back. Then they I must have dozed off. They brought me to my room. And I was just very hot. I, I was getting very hot. I was getting very nauseous. They were giving me nauseous medicine. They brought a fan in for me because I was like literally dying of heat. And uh, yeah, I was sleeping for a little. And this isn't a surgery where it's like everyone's going to be there and take care of you. You need to get up and walk around. This is, so the type of anesthesia, it's so much pressure in your chest. When you're laying down, you're actually, I was in so much pain, pro probably in my chest in the beginning a lot because there's just so much air and so much pressure and this isn't the type of air like when I had when I had the endoscopy they put air in your stomach to expand it so they can see like what they're doing and that was the type of air that you can kind of burp and other things that will kind of make it go away but after the gastric sleeve this is not the type of air in your stomach that you can just burp or pass gas and it'll go away it's not at all and uh, they did tell me that before but I didn't realize how serious they were after I was feeling so much pressure in my chest this is the surgery that right after you need to get up and walk and it sounds easier said than done because I actually was like struggling a lot because when they tried getting me up that's when I felt a lot of pain in my stomach it was it was really bad um 
thick. I, I've watched some YouTube videos where people basically said that they weren't in any pain. Um, I, I think they were lying <laughs> or they just have a really good pain threshold because it's painful. I'm not going to lie to you and I'm, I'm not going to like try to scare you out of because if you're watching this video, you're probably interested about the surgery or you want to know my experience and, and you just want to know a little bit more research. I don't want to scare you but I'm not going to lie to you. It hurts. It does hurt. Um, so I was in a lot of pain. So my family members were trying to get me up. They were like, come on, Ashley, let's go. But I had to move very slowly and like they weren't understanding it. There was like a whole bunch of times I kept snapping at everyone in the room because they were trying to get me up so fast. And I was just like screaming at everyone, leave me alone. I need a minute. Because it is, it's, it is painful. I had to move it very slowly just to get up and walk to the bathroom. Because I really wanted to try to uh, urinate because they were saying if I didn't that they would have to put, um, what's it called? A catheter? Yeah, catheter. They would have to put a catheter in and, you know, I'd be awake. And I'm like, oh, I'm not getting a catheter. So I was really pushing myself just to walk to the bathroom. Because I knew I wasn't going to be able to walk into the hallway yet just from the amount of pain I was in. So I was like, I need to get up and go to the bathroom. I do not want a catheter. Um, it's it's very painful. It, it It is, I'm not lying. It's painful. Um, do I regret it in this moment? No, I don't regret it. But again, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to be very honest with my experience. But again, everyone's different. I've watched some YouTube videos where some people were saying that, that they felt no pain and they were like up and walking like two hours later. That was not my experience. I was very struggling. Every time I would start walking, I'd get to the door. It felt very nauseous. I felt very hot. I had to go back to the bed. I felt like I was just going to fall over. But yeah, like I said, I'm not going to go into every single detail throughout every like different aspect. I kind of want to just give you guys a general view of my experience and then I'm going to make separate videos for each kind of um, subject like before surgery, after surgery, the day of surgery, how to prepare, things like that. So let me know in the comments down below what exactly you guys want to see. So um, that day you can't either drink anything after surgery which was fine. The next day they want you to drink 15, um, I believe it's I don't remember the exact number right now, but I think it was like four ounces every 15 minutes of water. I don't really, I don't remember right now, but I'm pretty sure it was four ounces of water every 15 minutes, which is, just sounds so easy because, you know, you could chug water, but it's actually not easy at all. Your stomach is this size and trying to drink that much water just with, within 15 minutes later, drink another fifth, four ounces of water. Uh, it was not easy at all. It's hard, um, but you just got to do the best you can. I really didn't struggle. I really didn't like focus on like, oh, I got to get this amount of water in 15 minutes. I really wasn't focusing on that. I was really just, I was really focusing on just doing the best I can with the water. Um, that's really just what I was focusing on mainly. So yeah, the next day it was a little bit easier to get up. Um, I remember during the night, there was one night, the night before, when I had to get up in the middle of the night because I felt like I was good to walk. I was just in so much pain. But there was this one tech there and she actually had the surgery done as well. And she, I mean, this isn't really that important, but it, I like telling the story. She actually had the surgery done by the same surgeon and she was the one that helped me get up and we were walking around the nursing station and she was just telling me about her experience and she was telling me how, you know, you're going to be you're in pain right now, but it's totally worth it and that she was so happy she got, got it done. She got it. She was like two years post-op and I don't know, just talking to her really put me in a better mood that day and it just felt good to have someone who actually understood what I was going through so of course having nurses and family members there are so nice and you know they know you're in pain but they actually don't know the pain you're in like they're not understanding it um, so it was really nice having that tech there with me that night walking around with me taking my, letting me take my time helping me get up slowly like she understood the pain because she went through it and uh, it was just really nice it was a nice experience it was nice having someone who who knew the same pain anyway so the next day I started drinking water um, so two for two weeks after surgery you are on all clear liquid diet 
And what that means is you can only have clear liquids. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you can see through it, you can have it. If you cannot see through it, you cannot have it. So you can have a clear protein water drink. Um, I, my doctor gave me some of them. They're pretty disgusting in my opinion. Um, you could have water. You can have ice pops and everything had to be sugar free. Um, you can have jello, which I never understood the whole je jello thing because yes, it, you can see through it, but um, it actually sit very uncomfortably in my stomach, so I really didn't have jello. You can have broth, and uh, that's pr pretty much it. I mean, there's not a lot of options you can have for a clear liquid diet. Um, so that was pretty hard for me, actually, the clear liquid, because um, I was really listening to my doctor and not doing anything sugar-free and I was actually pretty like on the third day I was like a zombie like I was really a zombie a week later I was even worse so then I finally just got um, I don't know if you guys you guys definitely know like I think it's flavorless or something uh, ice pops the liquid one you put in the freezer and it freezes those have sugar in it but I started having those instead of my sugar-free ice pops and they just made me feel so much better so I know they sell, tell you sugar free, but there are some times where you just like need some sugar and my doctor said it was okay and then she started having me uh, drink G2, which is like the Gatorade, but like 50% less sugar and um, that was making me feel better too. So I mean, you, you're, I felt like really like a zombie and then I had some sugar and I felt a little better. Uh, when I was home, I was in a lot of pain. Um, laying in a bed was actually very hurtful for me. I had to sit in a chair. Um, it's just, it hurts. It's hurt. It, it hurts after you were sore, you're tender, uh, you're so weak. It, it just hurts. They give you pain meds, so that does help. Yeah, so the first two weeks is a whole clear liquid diet. The following two weeks is all mushy foods, anything pureed. Uh, then the following two weeks are all soft foods where you can start having like, um, ground beef, you can have turkey, anything soft, but they also want you to stick to a lot of protein since you get full so fast. They don't want you just having, you know, pudding, which, I mean, I did have some pudding, you know, you don't want to deprive, you want to like have a little flavor in your mouth. I did have some pudding, but they really want you to stick to a lot of protein like yogurt, turkey, um, you can have cottage cheese and things like that. And then the two weeks after that, you can eat normal foods. But of course, you need to stick to like the meal plan that they provide you with. Um, so, I mean, that's the gist of it at the moment. Um, but I guess we'll talk about my complications I had. So when I was on the mushy stage, I think I was like almost one week in of the mushy stage. Um... It was actually very hard for me to drink water and even eat yogurt. Um, I would throw up here and there. Um, not from overeating. I was just, I just wasn't doing well. Um, everyone kept saying like, she looks really sick. Everyone was asking other people like, is she okay? I was just really concerned because honestly, I was not looking good. I looked like the life was sucked out of me. Um, I was getting dehydrated. I couldn't drink water. I couldn't eat. Then there was just this one morning where I woke up and my left shoulder was in so much pain. Every time I would breathe, I felt it right on my collarbone. Like, I'd breathe in and this was just, like, hurting so bad. The left side of my stomach was in a lot of pressure. Um, at that point, I was kind of able to lay on my side a little. And then I just remember waking up and the left side of my stomach was just, like, in so much pain. I was emailing my surgeon and the coordinator and I was letting them know about all my discomfort and my symptoms that I was having. Um, I was also very lightheaded. I was dizzy. Um, I felt like I was going to pass out. I would be driving a car and I would just feel like like I'd fall asleep. Like it was just it, it was just not good. And I was so finally um, the doctor calls me and they said, you know, go to the emergency room and we will send over the test that we want you to have. And I said, okay. 
I go to the emergency room and they do the CAT scan and they see a lot of fluid outside of my stomach. So with CAT scans, you can't tell what type of fluid it is. You can't tell if it's blood or if it's just regular fluid. So they thought I had a leak in my stomach. And when the doctor came over to me and said, you know, we're going to be admitting you, um, you have a leak. Um, I literally just broke down crying. I was so scared that I would have to go through this whole process again, going into surgery or um, starting the whole clear liquids again. Um, the clear liquids is a hard stage. It is very hard. Um, it is not easy at all. Um, so I just... I just mentally broke down. I was just crying. I called my mom. My mom was in North Carolina. I called my mom and I, it was just, I was just so scared, you know? So um, they admitted me. Um, they started me on antibiotics because who knows how long the fluid has been there. I mean, it was like, um, it was like couple days before that where I was having trouble drinking and eating um, but it wasn't until that same day I was having the left shoulder pain and the left stomach and the pain in my left stomach so um, they admitted me they started me on antibiotics they started me on some pain meds and uh, yeah so I had to wait for the following day so um, I was admitted on it was a Wednesday so around this time, this was like three weeks post-op, three weeks out, maybe three and a half weeks. Okay, so Thursday the following day, my doctor came to see me. He is so sweet. He's the nicest doctor. He makes he makes me feel like I'm like the only patient he has, and uh, he's just so sweet. I would recommend him to every anyone if you guys are in Westchester, New York. Um, I would recommend him. He is just amazing. Um, till this day, um. I'm almost two months post up and if I have any issues I have their email I have their phone number I call them they are just on point and what's great is like the hospital was like right next to their office so it's just really really great so uh, the doctor came to see me and he told me I had a hematoma and what a hematoma is it is a um, like a clot of blood it is just like a pocket of blood into your stomach and it was actually it's not into your stomach it was actually pushing against my stomach and that is why I couldn't eat or drink because yes the surgery um, makes your stomach very small it removes 85% of your stomach so you can so you can only take in very little which is what how you lose weight um, this was pushing against my stomach so which was making my stomach even smaller and that's why I couldn't eat anything that's why I couldn't drink anything that's why I was getting dehydrated lightheaded I was gonna pass out I was just not doing well. So, um, most people after they get the surgery, um, it varies depending on the doctors. After they get the gastric sleeve surgery, you do get a drain in your stomach and I think it just drains out any excess fluids or anything like that. My doctor stopped doing that about three years ago. Um, they never did the drain anymore and, uh, they've never had any issues and my doctor was really upset. He actually was like, he was talking to my family members and said, you know, we, ha we haven't done the drain in three years. We never had an issue. She gets it done and, you know, now she has a hematoma. So, um, it's very unplanned. It's, it happens. So, um, I had a hematoma, so we had to remove the blood. So I had to get a drain into my chest, um, which I actually just got it taken out last week. So I, if, so what's today? It's the October 7th. I had it in three weeks. I basically had it in for almost a month. Um, so they brought me down. They uh, numbed it. I was awake, but they numbed it and they gave me some, um, pain meds. And when they were doing it, I didn't really feel any pain. I felt pressure. Um, so they put the tube in and they put a drain so that it drains out the blood that's in your stomach. And um, I didn't really feel anything when they were doing it. But then when I went into recovery, I was in the worst pain of my life. It was worse than the gastric sleeve after. It was worse than me trying to stand up after the gastric sleeve. This pain felt like I was stabbed in my stomach and I basically was. They put a tube into my stomach so it was basically 
something pushed into my stomach. Um, it was, and I'm not being exaggerating, I'm not scaring you. Not everyone gets hematomas after. They're common after any type of surgery. So this isn't particular to the gastric sleeve, but I'm just sharing my experience. And it was because of the gastric sleeve, um, because it was just surgery in general. It was the worst pain of my life. And if you ask me now if I knew about the hematoma, would I still get it? The answer would probably be a no. Um, not going to lie. I mean, I, as of right now, I don't regret it. But if I knew before surgery I was going to get a hematoma and I'd have to get the tube into my stomach and knowing all the pain I would have been in, would I have done it? I mean... I don't, I don't think so. It was very painful. I was in so much pain and I was having a couple problems at the hospital. My mom ended up driving down from North Carolina to stay with me. I was actually in the hospital for a week and a half. Um, then um, after they put the tube in, I was in so much pain, pain meds. It was just, it was just awful. So the following day, which was a Friday, now we have to get back to the leak situation. So yes, I had a hematoma, but at that point they still believed it was a leak. So I had to go down to get an endoscopy. They said I wouldn't have needed surgery. So what they would have done is they would have went in um, and if the hole wasn't as large, they would have just put a clip on it and the clip would have eventually just came off on its own when it started healing. Or they would have to... Um, put this type of tool in to keep it closed that would have came up here I don't know I don't remember the name but uh either way it sounded scary to me so I went down they put me to sleep they must have went inside with the camera and then they saw no leak I didn't have a leak so when they came when I woke up they told me I didn't have a leak I was very relieved I was very happy because if they would have done if it really was going to be a leak and they had to close it um, I would have had to start all over again. I would have had to start for two weeks of clear liquids again. And I definitely did not want to do that. So, um, after that, now I'm in the hospital. I'm just relaxing because I have the tube in my stomach. I'm in pain. They have to give me fluids. They have to give me nausea medicine. They have to give me pain meds. They had to, I was low on B12 and vitamin K. They had to give me shots of vitamin K and B12. Um, and I was just in the hospital for a week and a half trying to get my labs all normal and things like that. Um, so that's kind of like a gist, that's kind of like a quick overview of the whole experience. Um, so then I left the hospital. I still had the tube in my stomach um, and the tube was attached to a drain that was on my leg. And um, I actually had to, had to keep that on for a long time. I don't know, every time I kept going back in for checks, they kept seeing that there was still blood. I was still draining a lot of blood. And they're not going to remove it if you're still draining. Um, but then, um, I think it was like two weeks ago, they took the bag off, kept the drain in, and capped it to see how I would do. And then two days later, I was in the same exact pain I was when I originally went to the hospital. So that's when they knew that, you know, we need to keep this drain in longer. They took the cap off, they put the bag back on so that it can continue draining. And, um, yeah, I finally got it taken off last week. And then, um, two days after they took the drain off, uh... I actually had to go to the emergency room and the ambulance had to come pick me up because I was at work by myself and um, I couldn't drive. I was just in a lot of pain. It was so bad that I was on the floor crying. I It was just really, really painful. So they brought me to the emergency room. They did a whole bunch of testing. Everything seemed fine. They said that it could have been a muscle spasm from... Um, taking the drain out the date like the two two days before that um and i was a little embarrassed at first but like i went all the way to the emergency room and it was just a muscle spasm they said but then i realized that i was in a lot of pain and if they didn't give me morphine they gave me morphine in the ambulance and if i just stayed home and who knows how long that pain would have lasted and it was just very bad it felt like Almost as bad as them putting the tube in, but not as bad. But it felt like that. It was just like I couldn't breathe. I mean, that was a complication. It doesn't happen to everybody. And I'm not saying all this and telling you guys all this to try to scare you. Um, but it, it happens sometimes, you know. It's 
but not everyone. So let's forget about the hematoma for a second and let's just say I never got the hematoma. Um, would I regret my decision? No, I definitely do not regret my decision getting gastric sleeve. It has been amazing. I have lost o over 50 pounds right now and it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm extremely happy with my decision that I got it. And at first I wasn't sure if I was going to make this video because I mean, everyone has an opinion. Um, but then I realized that I really don't care what anyone's opinion is because there are probably people who were like me looking on YouTube and I wanted to see other people's experience. So before I had surgery, I was on YouTube all the time looking up people's videos about gastric sleeve and trying to get more information. Um, I was looking up what they were eating after surgery, you know, what options they had for their liquid diets. And that's just things that I was looking up. So I know that there are people who are doing the same. So I really don't care about anyone's negative opinions. I'm making this video to share my experience and to help other people if they have other questions and things like that. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't regret my decision in this moment. Things are painful, yes. I mean, I could have a not a good pain threshold compared to other people. I think that it is an extreme lifestyle change. And uh, yeah, I mean, one of the main things that they tell you is that um, you will get sick if you overeat, you will throw up, you will be extremely ill if you overeat, if you eat the wrong things, you will be extremely sick, and then you eventually will learn never to do that again. So one thing I did was um, when I was drinking water, you need to sip it. In the beginning you need to sip it you cannot take two sips not even one big sip you will feel sick there was one time I took two big sips because I was just felt so thirsty and I threw up from water I threw up from water so imagine you eating something you're not supposed to you will throw up um, luckily I never really had issues with throwing up with food it was just that one time with water and then now I'm kind of very cautious um, because you'll be eating and you'll be like wow you know I feel good I think I could take another bite and then you'll you won't even expect it that other bite will make you sick and throw up so I'm pretty good about it because with my water experience like I kind of learned to be careful so when I feel just a tiny bit of content I'm like okay I'm done like I'm not gonna eat anymore because I don't want to get sick and you will get sick one of the main things in this that I didn't realize how serious it actually is is not to eat and drink at the same time you were never supposed to do that in the beginning or even for the rest of your life you're not supposed to um, it's just very big it takes up a lot of room in your stomach and you're not able to eat and you're not getting the protein you need so after the two weeks of liquids, two weeks of mushy, like, like, like a yogurt, cottage cheese, things like that. And then after two weeks of soft, and then when you're able to eat foods again, you know, you want to really make sure that you're eating a lot of protein. And like I said, it, it is easier said than done. I mean, there are a couple times so far where like, if I'm out to dinner, I'll pick on something. But again, you get so full fast that it's completely fine. But because you're getting so full fast, you really want to try to um, put protein in, you know? It's really important. So I've been eating a lot of string cheese. I've been eating a lot of turkey, chicken, um, even meatloaf. I haven't even tried steak yet. That, um, I don't know. I heard people, it makes people sick. Um, eggs. But actually, I haven't had eggs since the mushy stage. Because when I had eggs in the mushy stage, it actually kind of made me, like, my stomach upset. And ever since then, like, I was like, uh, I don't know if I want eggs anymore. <laughs> Even though I used to love eggs all the time. But I'm kind of like that now with yogurt. I had yogurt so much in the mushy stage that now I'm like, ugh, yogurt. Or broth. Like, some of those things, like, I never want to drink or eat again. Um, like, the sugar-free ice pops, I never want to eat, eat them again. Like, ever. Um... So yeah, eating and drinking is very important not to do. They say you're supposed to drink, if you're drinking, because after surgery, you are drinking water all day. If you are if you are somewhere, you should always have a water. If you're going to a store, you should always have a water. We, after surgery, we are so 
we are so easy to get dehydrated because our stomachs are so small and we're not really taking in any calories we're not taking in a lot of water it is so easy for us to get, get uh dehydrated i kept getting dehydrated a lot you can also tell if you're getting dehydrated by your urine if your urine is extremely dark you are a you are getting dehydrated and dehydration is not fun for us at all and if you had the surgery you understand it's not fun being dehydrated for us um, so you are supposed to be drinking water all the time and uh, that's very important so they say that um, you're supposed to stop drinking 30 minutes before you plan on eating and then start drinking again 30 minutes after everyone's different though I actually had to stop an hour before I was planning on eating because if I stopped 30 minutes, I, would, I wouldn't be able to eat a lot. I would still be really full. So I'd stop an hour before and I was able to intake like a lot of chicken actually. So uh, that's, everyone's different. It's all about trial and error. Um, yeah, so I was actually finally able to start vitamins about a week and a half ago. You can't have vitamins for like the first month, which kind of mm, sucks because you also feel so weak and you kind of feel like you know you need vitamins like i've never felt in my life where it's like i need vitamins until now like if i like i need vitamins and uh i know a lot of people have questions about hair loss i was getting a lot of questions about that um i haven't noticed anything drastic i mean even before the surgery i feel like hair would always come out when i'm brushing my hair or showering i guess from highlights and stuff um i haven't noticed anything Got, like drastically different but again I'm only almost two months out I know a lot of people experience more within their fifth month um that's from from videos that I've seen people struggle with hair loss in their fifth month so um I will keep you guys updated on that um I feel like that there is just so much more I'm supposed to be saying right now um, you know, but I don't know if I want to go into every single detail about like how you're supposed to eat and what you're supposed to eat. Um, I kind of just wanted to give you my general experience with the gastric sleeve in this video. Um, I just want to make sure I don't leave anything out. So yeah, I hope I explained my experience and, you know, my little complication I had with the hematoma. Um in detail at least um there is just so much you can i could sit here for three hours talking about this surgery and there's the fuzz i could sit here for like three five hours talking about this and going into every single detail but i think it'll be better if you guys like kind of leave your questions down below or if you guys have ideas about how i should kind of separate these videos um definitely let me know down below because i love your suggestions um but yeah, I, when I was telling you about my pain and stuff, I am not trying to scare you. I am just being honest. Um, at this moment, I do not regret my decision. I am very proud of my decision. And I'm very proud about me doing it all on my own because, you know, as I said, my family does live in North Carolina and I live in New York. And um, I kind of did all this on my own. I did the nutritionist once a month, the endoscopy um going to see the psychologist going to doing the surgery you know i kind I, I did all this on my own calling all my doctors making the right doctor's appointments and i'm very proud of myself for doing all of this um i know i'm an adult i i mean i should be doing it on my own but i am the type that would have my mom help me with everything and i did all this on my own and i'm very proud and um I mean, as much as it's very proud to do it on my own, you know, you need support around you as well. And I had my family, I had my boyfriend, I had my in-laws, and they, everyone was just so supportive of my decision. And um, that's really what you need. You, you need. you need to have a strong support system around you to help you. And I'm very happy that I had that. And um, I'm very happy with my decision and I'm very proud of my decision. And I think that if you are looking at this video to try to get information, I think you should go for it and I think you should look into it and I think that you should do what makes you happy and if you think that this is going to make you happy, then I think you should totally do it. Um, my one thing that I should suggest is that you can't look at this as a quick fix. You can't look at this as like, okay, I'm going to drop so much weight, it's going to help. It's really not a quick fix. 
you need to look at this as an extreme lifestyle change. So if you are in your nutritionist stages and you're seeing your nutritionist once a month and all that good stuff, um, I would take that very seriously because it's preparing you for after surgery. And in the beginning, I was like, oh, six months nutritionist, like that's so annoying. But it really did prepare me for surgery and it prepared me for after surgery. And it gave me as much information that I needed to take in. I'm actually very happy that all these steps are requirements because it, uh, it informed me. It helped me for after surgery and I'm very happy that I had to do all that. And um, yes, um, I'm just thinking that um, if I'm missing anything, I would hate to post this video. And then like I'll be like, oh, I should have said this. Yeah, I guess that's everything um, for my experience. Just a quick overview. Um, I'm going to start doing monthly updates and I think I'm going to make videos going into each detail kind of like before surgery, how to prepare after surgery, um, things to help you. And um, I think I'm just going to make separate videos for each kind of little subject because um, I can talk about it for hours. I love explaining it. I love telling people. And um, yeah, so I really hope this video was helpful for some of you. And um, yeah, leave your comments and questions down below and I'd love to answer them or even save them for a next video. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.